on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. As Donald Trump emerges from behind his podium with blood streaked across his face and thrusts a fist in the air, shouting to each and every person at that rally and around the country and around the world to continue the fight, we will not back down. We continue the fight. We are more united, more focused, more energized, more positive, more hopeful than ever. Not getting rid of us that easy, are they? It's 707. It's O'Connor and Company with Larry and Julie. Hey, Julie, what a weekend, huh? Good morning. Morning. Coming up later in this show, we're uh, we're so loaded. Starting at uh, 735, we're going to speak with a strategic communications director for the RNC to talk about how the events of Saturday afternoon affected the Republican National Convention and what to look forward to in terms of bolstered security there. Speaking of security, at 8.05, NYPD's finest Rob O'Donnell will join us for his law enforcement and security expertise on these events. 8.15, Selena Zito, who was in the front row at the rally, and then at 8.35, Congressman Michael Waltz, who wants to begin a congressional investigation into the Secret Service right now. Joining us at this moment is the former U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia and a good friend of this program, Joe DeGeneva. Joe, uh, you know what? I'll just start with your thoughts because I bet you've been uh, thinking quite a bit over the last 48 hours about where we are and what's happened and where we go from here. So I, uh, I offer the floor to you for a moment. Well, this was inevitable. Uh, for anybody who's been following politics for the last uh, 10 years, the m- m- just the merciless attack on Donald Trump, which began in 2015, an effort to demonize, to isolate, to target, to delegitimize, and to vilify Donald Trump, finally came to a head last Saturday with an assassination attempt. It was inevitable, and it was hoped for by some people in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And make no mistake about it. These people have blood on their hands, and I reject the notion that we are now all supposed to be quiet and do kumbaya because the president of the United States, Joe Biden, who was the biggest thug of all with this language, putting a bullseye, as he put it, on Donald Trump a few days before uh, a guy tried to assassinate President Trump. The language of vilification, demonization that's been used by President Trump, President Biden, rather, excuse me, Vice President Harris, Chuck Schumer, Hakeem Jeffries, Nancy Pelosi, you name it. And then the people in the media on MSNBC, they created the atmosphere where this shooting took place. And for them to have the gall over the weekend to suggest that Donald Trump should be quiet or that one nut from the Democratic Party, this guy, Dimitri Melhorn, says it was staged, that people must consider the possibility that this shooting was staged by Donald Trump. The Democrats are a very sick bunch, totally, across the board. There are no good ones, because they all were silent while this vilification of Donald Trump was going on. Shame on all of them. Shame on all of them. Good for Donald Trump. Yeah, the the idea that, you know, electing Donald Trump would mean the last election in this country, that the right. that he would, you know, then have the power to, you know, the, the language that came out of the Supreme Court ruling that he could order SEAL Team 6 to assassinate his political enemies. Uh, if you truly believe that, then it's a, frankly a reasonable direction to take to do whatever it takes to stop this. Joe Biden uses that language. He must be stopped at all costs. That's right. Bullseye. That is the language of someone inciting this sort of thing. Uh, and his examples last night of, you know, as he tried to both sides this, Joe, saying uh, immediately pivoting from the assassination attempt of his political rival, the man that he's, you know, thrown every ounce of, of legal criminal activity at, to try to get behind bars, to then pivot and say, you know, like January 6th and the Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping attempt and, and Paul Pelosi being attacked. Is, is there any legitimate, reasonable comparison here? No, and, and they know it because they're scared now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Biden's sitting there uh, in the Oval Office. He's done three Oval Office speeches, and he picks this one. 
He looks so silly behind the, the seat. He's so unimpressive as a president of the United States. Let's face it, we're being led by a moron. Biden is, I've known the guy since he was in his teens. He's never changed. He's the same little, just little grifter thug that he's ever been. And no matter how much he tries to paint himself as the president, he's nothing more than a tin horn dictator. The guy's a thug, he's pathetic. And he has the gall to go there and blame everybody except the people responsible for it, the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party set this up and they are responsible for this lock, stock and barrel. I hope there are enough smart Americans to realize that and throw this bum out of office. Joe, what do you make of the Secret Service reaction? Uh, I mean, there was we saw some incredibly brave Secret Service um, officers on the stage with Trump. But then we saw a little bit of confusion, particularly with some of the female Secret Service agents sort of scrambling. They didn't look like they knew what they were doing. And now there are reports that the head of Secret Service was really committed to DEI. There's some questions about Secret Service resources being diverted to Jill Biden. What do you make of all this? And what do you think is next for the Secret Service? Well, let's make no bones about this. Uh, we, We can all be very thankful that there were good Secret Service agents around the president to assist him off the stage, but even they didn't do their job correctly. Here's the bottom line, the Secret Service failed. This was a catastrophic failure of security and protection. The fact that that building sat there unguarded, unvisualized by anybody is an absolute catastrophic failure of security. It is rule 101, buildings like that are covered. They are isolated. They are surrounded. They are, if you have to use local police, fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a Secret Service agent. And then we hear about an officer trying to climb up on the roof and then was stared down by, by the shooter and then fell to the ground. What's going on? Yeah. What happened at that scene? And the answer is we have somebody in charge of the Secret Service who is a DEI hire. She's a disgrace. She, she should be removed immediately. You never heard one word from the president of the United States about that, because that's another group he can't he can't afford to lose, given his perilous political situation. Joe Biden can't afford to lose the people that support Cheadle, that community, mm-hmm. that entire community of women who support Cheadle. The wrong hire, the wrong time, the wrong job. She may have been for 23 years at the Secret Service, but she obviously learned nothing. She is a disgrace. She should be removed. And I want to I'm just I'm just I just hope that the Republicans on the Hill who get the first crack at questioning her do it the right way, that they dig down on specifics because she is useless as the head of the Secret Service. Her only goal is to make sure that by 2030, 30 percent of the Secret Service is female. You know what? That's an idiotic goal by an idiotic person. (laughs) Yeah, the, the 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 only goal every single day of the Secret Service, daily, no matter what, the only goal they should focus on is to protect the people that they're assigned to protect, oh, yes, period. Yes. That's and, it. There and, is no and, other and, goal. And, and, and Larry, let me just say this, I want to, just to close off my comments. As soon as the president, and by the way, Trump was smart. As soon as he realized he'd been shot, he dropped down. He didn't fall down. He dropped down immediately to get out of the line of fire. And then the agents, quite properly, jumped all over him. But here's what then failed. The next thing that happens is you don't worry about the president's shoes. You don't listen to him. You overrule him. You grab him. You carry him off immediately. He should have been out of there in seconds in in that SUV and gone. It took too long. And part of the problem was that some of the agents around him who were women could not do the job physically. Thank you, Joe. It's always great to talk with you. It's uh, days like this where we want to hear from our friends and we want to hear the kind of fire and passion that you bring for this nation. I know how much you love it. Thank you, sir. You bet. It's 715 WMAI.